Today on the channel, we're doing a Berkshire bone and pork butt. We're doing a homemade vinegar sauce. And because I had to run errands for three quarters of the day, I did it all on my phone. I'm gonna show you how we did it. Let's get into it. What's up, barbecue fans? Walk back to the patio. My name's Jake. You're watching Ramen Cook. Today on the channel, we're doing some Berkshire bone and pork butt. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Berkshire, if you put Berkshire beside traditional pork, you're gonna see that it's gonna be pinker, it's gonna be darker, it's gonna have more intermuscular fat, and once you try it, it's gonna have a lot more flavor. That being said, this recipe will work with any pork that you want. We're gonna also make a delicious vinegar sauce, but let me bring you up to speed because as you can see, it is almost 4.30, so things have been going on for a long time at this point. We'll take you back to last night when I opened up my pork had two butts, I'm actually doing two different videos, so it came in handy. We opened up some D'Artagan Foods Berkshire pork, and what I did is I took one of them, I took my knife, and we crossed hatched the fat. Now, why are we doing that? Really what we wanna do is we wanna let that seasoning get deeper into the meat, and it's not gonna really go through the fat, so if you cross hatch a little bit, you can open up and expose some of the meat, and you can get a little bit of seasoning in there. It's not gonna have a ton of benefit to it, but every little bit helps. The big thing here is that we did this last night and we are dry brining it for about 16 hours. So that's really gonna let it penetrate deeper into the meat. On these pork butts, there's nothing to trim. All you do is you cross hatch that fat cap and then you just start throwing that seasoning down. Start at the bottom, put a heavy coating all the way around. The more that you can get the stick, the better. Did the sides and then finally we did that fat cap we ended up using two packages of this rub that I like. It's my go-to for pork. It's absolutely delicious. It's from Growmates. I'll put a link down below, but it's the Memphis Pit Slow and Low Rub, and I love it. I've been using it for 15 or 16 years at this point, and it, I can't tell you how good it is. You're just gonna have to trust me and try it out yourself. Uh, but what we did is we put them on a cooling rack in the fridge and then let them sit for 16 hours. Then this morning, around seven o'clock, I came out we uncovered the yoder, got myself some Bear Mountain hickory pellets, filled up that hopper, then I filled up the smoke tube with some pellets, took my torch, lit up that pellet tube. Now, for the pellet tubes, you really wanna light them for a good two or three minutes. Make sure the pellets are starting to burn. If you don't give them enough time to burn, you'll come back in a couple hours and the pellets will have just gone out. Typically, I'll give them at least four minutes while they were starting to catch fire and burn a little deeper into the tube, I went downstairs and I grabbed myself a foil container. I put some cold water in that. I put cold in there specifically because we're gonna be starting a yoder ice cold. So I'm gonna allow it to come up with temperature a little slower and take advantage of some of that smoke. When you first start a pellet grill, we really pour out some smoke. So we're gonna take advantage of that. So once I had everything assembled here, I went and I grabbed my pork. We put the butt on the top rack. I put my temp probe in there and then we started up our yoder. I set it for 200. The goal here is, is that I want it to sit in a ton of smoke for at least the first four hours. That smoke tube is gonna burn for four hours and I'm gonna leave it at 200 for four hours. Then because I had a whole bunch of errands to do today, I was out running around about four and a half hours in, I just got out my phone, we got the Fireboard app up and I turned up the yoder from 200 to 275 and I went on about my day. So now, we're nine and a half hours into our cook. We're at 181, so we're in really good shape. Let me show you what it looks like here. I think for not being home all day and just using my phone, I think we did a pretty good job to check that guy out. All right, I put some water in here because I wanna get some moisture in the chamber because I'm not here to spray and help attract smoke. But because we had the smoke tube run in, and we were running at 200 for a while. We got a fair amount of smoke in there. I think we're pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna wrap this guy. Keep our heat in here for a sec, but I'm gonna just use some cotton gloves. The cotton's gonna give us a little bit of heat protection because this guy is definitely hot. And we're gonna double wrap this just to make sure we don't lose any of our juices that we're gonna get there. I mean, tell me that guy's not looking good. Got some great color all the way around. The bone's already starting to pull back, separate. 
It's got a little bit more time to go, but I am super, super happy with that. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna wrap this nice and tight. My goal here is just to, you don't wanna steam it. So I'm gonna wrap it super tight. I'm not even gonna put any braising juices in it. We're not gonna need that for this cook. And once we get it in this foil, it's gonna cook a lot quicker. We'll put this up here. Let me make sure where my bone is. So here's my bone. I'm gonna put it on this side. And then I am gonna put my pit probe back in here just as a rough guideline. We'll go right back to the center again. Tell you what, it feels pretty darn tender already. So now that we have that wrapped up, it's gonna take about another hour and a half or so. We're gonna do probably an hour rest. And while we're doing that rest, we'll put together our vinegar sauce. So. I'll bring it back a little bit. So it's been about an hour and a half. Let's have a look at how we're doing. We're 205, 206 in here, depending on where you go. Feeling nice and tender there. Exactly what we're looking for. We know our pork's done. Get this guy off. We'll turn our yoder off and we're gonna let that guy cool down. So for this, we're gonna let this rest for a good hour. That's gonna give us time to make our sauce here and just have this cool down. As I'm sitting here, I can see that I poked too far through my probe. So I'm just gonna wrap this again real quick so I can try and save some of these juices. Let's see. Worked pretty hard for that, so I don't wanna lose it all. I'm just going to, sorry, you're not gonna be able to see it on camera, but we're just gonna pour all that back in so I don't lose it all. Here, we'll wrap this up nice and tight again and try and keep <laughs> all of our juices in there. Careful with your thermometer. When it's this tender, it's pretty easy to go right through. Hopefully we'll hold that in there now. We'll put this guy off to the side. Oh, sorry there, buddy. And now what we'll do is we'll make our sauce here. So I reorganized everything so I know what's what. I made this a couple weeks ago and it was absolutely delicious. So I want to share it with you. Let me tell you, I'm going to make a double batch. You might as well, because it doesn't make that much in a singular batch, but we've got some celery salt, ground mustard, salt, pepper, molasses, Worcestershire sauce, brown sugar, some chili flakes. I'm using my smoked ketchup. You can tell with the S I made that in my, uh, burger 2.0 video and then we've got some apple cider vinegar obviously this is a vinegar sauce so we're gonna have that as a base and what we're gonna do here is i'm gonna put everything together and then we'll warm it all up and I'll, what i'll do is I'll, I'll put this on the screen so you can see it but we're doing one teaspoon of celery salt one teaspoon of ground mustard now, because I'm using celery salt, I'm going to back off on the salt a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to use about three quarters of, a, of diamond kosher salt. And then we're going to get some fresh cracked pepper. I'm going to make this a little finer. My pepper can in here. One teaspoon of pepper. Tiny bit more. There we go. And what we'll do is we'll take some molasses here. And we'll do two teaspoons of this. Some Worcestershire sauce. Now I like Worcestershire sauce, so I'm gonna go three here. Try and rinse out some of this molasses. And this is just brown sugar. So it's actually two teaspoons, but because it's got molasses in it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna use about three quarters of a tablespoon, get it close enough. And then red chili crushed flakes. Now I traditionally don't use a lot of these, but I did use them in the original and it wasn't too bad. So we're gonna go one and a half tablespoons of crushed red pepper. We're gonna go one cup of smoked ketchup. I have to make some more of this real soon. go and two cups of apple cider vinegar I'm 
a little bit left, a little extra is not going to hurt. <laughs> if you guys have been around for a little while, you know that I tend to wing things just a little bit. So now what we want to do is we want to break all this down a little bit. And we're going to bring this up to a simmer. So we'll take this over to the links. So over here, we're going to bring this up to a boil and then we'll turn it down to a gentle simmer and we'll let it go for about 10 minutes. Just break down all that ketchup, get all the spices mixed up. So now that we've got not quite a boil, but we've got, you can see along the edges here, we're boiling along the edges and we've got a pretty, pretty good simmer going. Now I'm just going to back it off. We're going to simmer this for 10 minutes from this point on. So we've been simmering like this for 10 minutes. It's time to pull it off. So for this sauce, because it's got some red pepper flakes in it, if you put it in like a squirt bottle, they'll actually jam it. So I'm just gonna put it into a mason jar. So a double batch gives you a fair amount, as you can see. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this cool off for about 40 minutes and then we'll put it all together and see how we did. So we're almost at the hour mark. I can't wait any longer. I'm starving. We're gonna break into this before we do that. On this channel, every video, we do a contest. Super easy to enter. All you gotta do is be a subscriber. You gotta like the video and comment with two hashtags that I use unique in every video. In this video, we will do hashtag pulled pork, hashtag vinegar sauce, and all you gotta do is you gotta comment down below, leaving those hashtags in the next video, I'll use a random comment generator. And if you win, you'll get a $25 gift card to epibq.com. And if you happen to be a Patreon member, starts at five bucks, I'll make it 50 bucks. I'll double it for you. Let's look who won last week's video. So I moved this into a pan just so we can make sure we catch all the juices. As you can see, it is looking absolutely delicious. Overall, pretty happy with that. Looks like our bone is gonna pull right out. Pretty darn clean. One little catch there, but that's a clean bone. And as you can tell, the rest of it's just gonna shred right apart. Looking good. Let's get this guy shredded up. Now, one of the things about Berkshire pork as well, when you make shredded pork, you don't have a lot of, I don't know what the terminology for it is. I, I just find like when I use a cheap cut of pork here, I end up picking through and throwing out a lot of intermuscular fat and stuff that I just, it's uh, stringy and I just, I don't want to eat it. With this stuff, there's very little waste. So yes, it's more expensive, but there's very little waste. And the flavor, let me tell you, there is definitely a difference in it. Shredding apart beautifully. Still quite hot. There's a beautiful piece right there. Oh yeah. Mm. That is delicious, my friends. I mean, you can taste a lot more of that seasoning coming through it. Put that seasoning on for a day or two in advance and it really does get into the meat. And just like that, we got some delicious shredded pork. Of course, we've got to try our sauce here. Just put a little bit here. I'm not gonna mix it all in. I just wanna try some on the side here. Mm. Traditionally, I'm not like a super huge fan of vinegar sauces, but this one, it was absolutely phenomenal. As I said, I made it a couple weeks ago and loved it. So I had to share it with you guys. I'm gonna make myself a little sandwich here, of course. Pile that baby on. Bigger the better. Yeah, let's not be stingy on it. We got a bunch. Mm. Good stuff. What doesn't look good about that? Absolutely delicious. Mm. Pulled pork, the gift that keeps on giving, whether you do one 
butt or two, you can end up with a tremendous amount of pork for not that much work. I really didn't have to babysit this too long. We went four and a half hours at 200, and then I turned it up remotely to 275, and it ran for about another six and a half hours, and we rested for an hour, and here we are. You can vacuum seal this, throw it in a Ziploc bag, warm it up the next day, and it's gonna be delicious. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment down below with the hashtags. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.